today you've heard um, both my panel members and all the speakers today talk about all the innovations and trends that, or some of the innovations and trends that are going on in the healthcare market. You've heard about ACOs, bundled payments, um, trends with various types of healthcare providers and medical homes using food for medicine. So there's a wide variety of innovations, trends, and changes going on in the healthcare market. But there were three that I chose to speak about because they haven't been mentioned yet, and I think they are really going to be significant, um, not only now, but they are significant um, in the next coming years. And it relates to narrow networks. What's happening now is you have a lot of the payers contracting with a small number of providers and they go to those providers that can provide services at the lowest unit cost. You see this a lot on the exchange, but you're seeing this now happen outside the exchange. Just as changes in the Medicare environment naturally flow to the commercial payer environment uh, shortly after changes take place. So, and one reason that this is happening is premium sensitivity. A lot of patients, even, even physicians, you have healthcare as well, complain that premiums are going up on an annual basis. So they come up with this narrow network as a way to lower premiums for patients and also to provide greater access. Think of a narrow network as your in-network provider under your current plan slash those numbers of in-network providers by about 80%, and that's what you the end result is that narrow network of providers on these exchange plans and now with certain commercial payers. <coughs> this has been happening for quite some time, but starting about a year ago, most of you had probably read about United Healthcare dropping about 30% or trying to drop about 30% of its providers uh, from its, its network, and then an injunctive action was filed in federal court, and that and the ability for them to drop those payers was state. But it just goes to show you the trend in the marketplace and where the payer mindset is, not only on the exchange, but outside the exchange in regular commercial products and also in the Medicare environment. And what's the impact on providers? Some providers are just being dropped from plans. They receive a letter in the mail saying, we don't want you on our network anymore. And then there are others that are actively going out there and contracting with payers to be on their network. And they say, listen, I will provide X services at a lower cost if you send me you know, double, triple, quadruple the number of patients. And some of you are probably saying, how is this, how is this possibly happening? We, our days are packed with patients. We don't have enough time as is to see our patients. How can a doctor physically see double, triple, quadruple more patients than they're seeing now? It's happening. I think there are some instances where a physician may be able to provide the same quality of care, but as you can imagine, quality is likely to be sacrificed if a patient needs to make up volume in order to continue to make the same amount of money that they were making when they were outside of the narrow network. And what's the impact on consumers? There are multiple um, factors that come into play. One, access. As you saw on a slide before, in um, Palm Beach County, there are some people that would have to travel 20 plus miles to see a provider. So that's already a problem is, one, the distance. Two, how does a patient get there? Not everybody has the transportation to get to a provider. And then three, if they have to travel that far, it takes a large portion out of their day, and a lot of people work. So people sometimes forego care because they don't want to take time away from their, their job. Another trend is a customized network. It's sort of, um, I'd say it's a, more of a concierge version, version of a narrow network. And you see this happen with a lot of large employers or groups of smaller employers. And they go out and they negotiate directly with healthcare providers based upon that business's needs and the needs of its employees. And this is really a big trend. In fact, I actually have some clients that go directly to the employers. They come up with a business model, whether it's dealing with um, a bundled payment relating to uh, hip replacements, knee replacements, and they're out there soliciting employers that might be interested in capping their costs for these type of orthopedic services. Examples of these custom networks across the country, you have the Pacific, let's see this works, okay. you have the Pacific Business Group, 
and you have the Employees Health Coalition. And this is, these are just two large examples, but you have them on smaller capacities around the country. But this is really a big trend and it's going to continue as employers try to keep down their costs. I, I think it was yesterday, the day before, you probably read about Walmart uh, stopping um, its health care coverage for its part-time employees. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's really, this trend is continuing. And this is an innovative way for employers to be able to provide care for their employees be able to choose providers that they think can provide a good quality of care so that they could keep down their costs, keep their employees from missing work, and continue to provide health care. Another big trend is watching the big box stores enter the market. Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, they're all entering the market. They've been doing so for a couple of years, but as you can see, the pace is just increasing dramatically. And I think one of the reasons that they're successful at doing it, not only do they have the revenues to really be able to afford to innovate in the healthcare market, but access. Everywhere you drive, you can pretty much, you know, count to 60 seconds or, you know, 80 seconds. And before you know it, you'll probably see a Walgreens, a CVS, a Walmart. And so they are a great hub for patients to seek care. And there was a recent study that asked patients, what is most important to them when they seek out Healthcare. Is it your provider, your relationship with a provider, the cost? What is most important to you? And a lot of them said access and convenience. And I think that's why these big box stores are going to be very successful in entering the healthcare market. And Walmart alone has said earlier this week, they said, we want to be number one in the healthcare market. Whether or not that'll happen will be seen, but they have, you know, the money and they have the geographic scope to really reach out to a lot of patients. And what's the common theme that you're hearing today? No matter what the topic is, except for probably genetics, it's all about providing care with quality at a lower cost, um, managing uh, population health to a greater number of patients. So no matter what anybody says today, the focus is on that, and it's about saving costs. Thank you.